Paul Brarin here from EV Club of Connecticut. I'm here with Kevin from Deco. And what we have right next to the e-bike day that just ended, uh, wrapped up with all electric bikes and then Tesla Rivian and Lucid on the other side of the state capital of Connecticut, we have an electric bus and that's pretty cool. It's a Ford, so it's a retrofit, right, Kevin? That, that's right, yeah. So this is a, a Collins, uh, as you can see, bus. Um, there are really three manufacturers of this bus. So it started with a Ford chassis. Okay. Uh, this is an E350 chassis, which was retrofit um, or upfitted by an electric upfitter called Motive. Um, they are one of several uh, electric upfitters. Do you know where they are by any chance? What state? Uh, Motive is outside, is in Michigan. So you can also get this vehicle now on a Lightning E-Motors chassis uh, or upfitted chassis, uh, which is what Collins has now gone to. Do you happen to know where this car is made? Is this sort of near Michigan or? Yeah, this was, I don't know where this uh, chassis was made. Yep. It would make the most sense for it to have been made in one of the Michigan plants. For Thank you for gently correcting me yeah. saying car. Yeah, it's a truck, a chassis. This is what's called, a, it's a cutaway chassis. So it just comes to them as a, they'll have the front cab. Got it. And then the frame rails in the back. At that point, they'll take uh, the internal combustion engine out. Um, they don't make, uh, Ford does not make what are called gliders yet. And that's kind of the next step. Um, so that would come without uh, an engine and a transmission, um, which are not needed for this vehicle. But uh, Motive went through the process of taking that out. Uh, they put in a direct drive motor. Uh, they took out the transmission, the internal combustion engine, um, and they put in the direct drive motor and the battery system. Um, which are 150 kilowatt hour uh, battery system. 115 okay. kilowatt hour battery system. So that's um, almost double, say something like a Tesla Model 3 or a yeah. Lucid Air. Yeah, okay. So, it's it's so what's the range? About half to a third of our larger buses that are going to be coming, uh, which are made by Navistar, IC Bus, uh, might be better known as International, um, which are going to be Type C uh, school buses. We've got 10 of those uh, coming. Okay. And naturally, anyone's going to ask, what's the range approximately? Uh, so this, it's the mar it's marketed uh, at about 85. We've been getting about 60, 65. Uh, I see it's Middletown. Yep. So it's an active service. Yep. So How's that gone? Uh, we have, to be honest with you, we've had some issues. Um, so it's one of the most important parts of this is, you know, we wanted to get in on the ground floor. We wanted to experience the issues, deal with all the stuff. We knew it was going to be difficult to deal with everything from, from grants to infrastructure to, uh, to, you know, keeping the vehicle on the road, having the service, having the after sale support. Um, from all three of these manufacturers now that all have to come together to make this, this vehicle vehicle run. Um, so it's, it's been a challenge, um, and but we just haven't been dissuaded by that, you know, and we've got 10 more on order, which this one was uh, aided by the uh, Diesel Emissions uh, Reduction Act grants. Um, that was a state deer grant, not a federal one, I believe. Um, and our other 10 are coming from uh, being partially funded by uh, Volkswagen mitigation funds through the state of Connecticut. Uh -huh. Okay, so some of the Volkswagen uh, diesel scandal money is going that yeah. way. Not, not just Electrify America, but it's going towards buses too. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, it's good to hear. Yeah. Thank you for your candor about some challenges. Yeah. You're blazing new trails. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. other districts get to learn from it. If people thought there weren't going to be issues uh, along the way, then, you know, they were, you know, maybe a little too uh, bright-eyed. But, yeah. you know, we understand there are going to be challenges just as there are with any buses. 24. Uh, I'm sorry about the wind that kicked up. I'm trying my hardest to block it. Uh, uh, charging incentives or charging infrastructure. Did you get any perks from the uh, legislature of the state of Connecticut here to help out with that or uh, not so much? So I don't know on the DIRA grant um, that purchased this bus. Um, we One of the lessons that we've learned is for this, we have a level two charger, which is an AC charger. Um, going forward, we'll only be using DC level three chargers. Yeah, um, faster. Which, yeah. Correct, yeah, faster, uh, you know, more, more reliable. Um, and so we did get help on, or we're going to get help on this, you know, this next set of buses, this next 10. Um, but okay, but not so much so far. I couldn't speak to what we got for the much cheaper level two AC chargers. Okay, and I'll try to, the camera underneath might not show too much, but can you show me at least the charge port and then we'll have a look inside together? Yes, yeah, so the charge port's on the, on the other side. Thank you so much. It's a J1772 connector, which is standard. standard. Yeah. Pops off like that. Okay, anyone that has an EV will recognize that. Let's see, you know, just to so people know what they're looking at. So, probably looking at on a 240 
asphalt, you know, level two charging outlet in a garage or whatever. Probably looking at 16 hours or something for full. Uh, so, so this one charges in about eight hours of 100. Um, percent Oh, nice. So we have a okay. It's about a 25 kilowatt uh, level charger. Um, the level uh, two. So, so it's about as high as you can go. Uh, AC charger. And I see um, some orange cables there. Yeah, for the high voltage. Yeah, you'd have to get all the way underneath there to see. Uh, you might be able to see there's no transmission obviously the drive motor is cr uh, connected directly to uh, drive shaft which then goes into the drive axle yep. um, so that's a direct drive uh, motor and then forward of those are the, the battery pack um, which is a, a sodium nickel actually battery pack which is a much better uh, battery for the environment um, but it's not quite as up to the uh, the technology as they have in lithium ion these days uh yeah for, for charging price matters more than weight and size and something so large right Correct. so yeah yep that yep. makes sense so you know going forward we would certainly uh go on lithium based batteries um rather than sodium nickel um they give you a especially, choice though. especially knowing that uh especially knowing that uh you know any battery we use is going to be recycled so the sodium nickel you know seems good uh for uh, you know, environmental reasons, but all these batteries you can get recycled so many times uh, now that the lithium is probably the way we would go moving forward. Okay, thank you for pointing that out. And when I showed on the hood at the very beginning of the video, that's basically HVAC equipment. Look at heating, yeah. cooling, all the existing so, lines are just retrofitted. So the only things that are really high voltage on this are, you know, that that drive motor and yep. then the HVAC system. Got it. You know, everything else runs off of 12 volts um, interior. Um, which is then charged by the rest of the system as the regenerative braking, which charges both systems. Great, so a lot of stop and go, regen would be important. Yep. Uh, can you show me inside a little bit? That'd be great. Well, I mean, once you step inside, I mean, from the outside and from the inside, really, it, it pretty much looks all the same. You know, this is what your typical Type A bus looks like. So the kids, the drivers, you know, for the most part, are not going to notice much difference walking into this vehicle. Um, obviously it's much quieter um, and it's going to drive much differently uh, for the driver once they actually start driving it and the kids will notice that too. But Do you know if this is a heat pump based system that stays the same from the factory? That doesn't get changed? Uh, no, that so that is a high voltage uh, AC system. Okay, so thank you. Multiple cameras, sort of control panels here. So most of this stuff is just the existing stuff that the school bus maker makes yeah, so regardless. All this stuff that's connected up here, you know, we've got our radio, we've got our GPS system, uh, we have surveillance cameras, fans, you know, there's, uh, all, all that stuff is 12 volts. Got um, it. It is typical. Where is the 12 volt battery in a bus like that? Is it 12 under volt the hump? battery, you can see it right, right in front up there. There's the radio, Motorola. Level battery right here, right in front of me. That's pretty large. And it gets, you know, used quite a bit. A vehicle like that. And we've got a swinging arm in the front. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. End up being um, a nice technical, pretty deep dive there. Oh, there's the stop sign that swings out. That's really cool. Thank you so much for your time.